welcome to episode two of Carp Pursuit. Now you must have loved episode one. Thank you, because we have had loads and loads and loads of positive feedback and comments on that one. So again, thank you very much. So episode two, you find us at Stanick Lakes. Now this is quite a complex, so we haven't decided which lake we're gonna go on yet until we've spun the wheel of fate. So without further ado, I'll spin this and we'll find out my fate. We'll see, I was actually hoping we're off for that one. The orange one, boily fish on this one. I haven't had a quick look, the waters are quite murky, so I was hoping to use my complex tea, smelly boilies, but let's get on with it and let's see what Steve's got, because I'm forgetting, this is only half of it. Now I've got to take a card with challenges on, so let's have a little look at that. Right then Ian, time for your challenge card. What did I take last time? Number two, you went middle for diddle. One. I'm going for number one this one. time. Numero uno. <laughs> you must catch a total of four fish. For a fish to count, it must be caught on a different style of PVA fishing. That's okay. Um, four. Well, I've got three in mind. Um, solid bags, mess, a little mess bags, which I really favour, <coughs> and a stringer. Yeah, I can do that. The fourth one, We'll cheat and wait till Steve walks off and just say that we called it on a mesh bag anyway. The fourth one, all jerking aside, we'll come up with a bit later. Let's try and get three of these on the bank first with these different styles. Uh, yeah. Having not been here, every lake fishes with PVA bags, doesn't it? Doesn't it? We're going to find out. We'll find out, won't we're we? Gonna yeah, find right. just, uh... Oh, what are you smiling about? <laughs> you, ain't, you are not this side of this card. I'm, I'm interested to see what your fifth... <laughs> Uh, the, the fourth one. Style of gonna be. I'm sure we'll come up with something. I almost, almost gave you five styles. Of that would have been really lovely, Steve. Thank you very much. Since I've only, I'm, I'm straight. Well, I have got a fourth one in mind, but we'll, we'll go for that later. When you toddle off. Anyway, let's go and have a walk round, find ourselves a peg, and start this challenge. Right, this is a lovely little corner. I think we're going to give it a go here. This is Mallard Lake. So we'll start here and see how we get on. We've got a, a, a heavy snag tree to my right and overhang to my left. Oh, I think it's going to be fairly close in work, this. So it's going to probably be a solid, oh, do you know what? I don't use solid bags much, so I'd like to get that one out of the way first of all, hopefully. As I set about getting some kit together to drop a couple of rods in the edge, I'd forgot about the box of products I would be needing for rigs and bait, but Steve hadn't. I have in front of me Steve's magic box. So let's see. Bear in mind it is, you must have loads of these in your van, mate. One for, one for each of the I wheel spin. <laughs> Daryl, he needs a bigger van. So when we spun the wheel, as you saw, it ended up on PVA products, so we've got perfect. You know, one of my favourite styles of PVA fishing is with a mesh system, so that... Do I get to keep all this at the end of it? Maybe, I'll see how well you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I'm a good boy, I'll get to keep that. Uh, <laughs> we've got PVA string and solid bags. PVA string, do you know what? It's something, it's a fantastic way of fishing. Something we rarely do though. Solid bags is something I never do. So that's gonna be a challenge in itself, tying one of them up. And there's a the system for the solid bags. Oh, I'll show you this one first. Now these are good, swim stream carp pellets. Haven't used a lot of them, but certainly know people in the match world, the seat box world that use these a lot. And they rarely fail. So we'll have a little go on that. Complex tea now. 
He knew this, my favourite for the last 18, since joining Dynamite, I've almost exclusively used, um, other than the hit and runs, Monster Tiger Nut. Now I'm sure Steve knows that. So he's put in here something, I have used this a little tiny bit when I first started, but the Monster Tiger Nut grabbed me. But for the coming summer, I intend swapping over things anyway. So I've got Complex T, which um, by reputation is as good as the Monster Tiger Nut, I'm sure. For me, the summer will tell that story, but it stinks. Re it smells of, I don't know, marmite, bovrily, sort of meaty sort of smell. And we've got murky water. So we are starting in this peg on Mallard. The water's nice and brown. That is probably going to do a better job for me than the one I would normally pick. So without further ado, I better crack these packets. And, um, oh, complex tea. Now, is that wafters or wafters, Steve? Wafters. Is it wafters? Because we're quite posh, aren't we? Wafters. That's wafters, okay. Because from where you, you work, it would be wafters, mate. Wafters. No, no. So this is wafters. We have wafters. We have yellow hit and runs, which I love anyway. And a sticky dip. Um, Hook bait I, dip. There was another pot of pink hit and runs that I forgot to put in the box. So I'll, I'll leave you with them hook baits. And if you struggle, with them, my friend. I think you should give me the pink ones because I love the pink ones. So I've got to use these. On all the rods, have I? And the pink ones. We're gonna just get, yellow ones. Yeah, that's why just give me them pink ones, baby. <laughs> right. Right, I'll best get set up then. Uh, I think we'll have a solid on one rod and a mesh bag on the other. I'm going to start with two and see how we got on here because we've got two marginal areas. I don't want to flood it with rods. Although in an hour's time when I haven't had a bite, that might change. As you know, I change my mind every single second of the day. But it's fishing. Boy, it is. Boy, it is. 15 millers, good size for air. So we'll let them start with one of them on a rig actually. But right, we're going to start with a little mesh bag and the pink hit and run that Stephen mentioned earlier. Just off the end of that tree, I've put a couple of little scoops of pellet. We're sticking down there. And hopefully it won't be too long till we're bent into one. say earlier I'll change my mind every three seconds I was going to stick to the two rods which are bedded in under these two overhangs but then I've just seen one show out there so complex T little bag of pellet look him on like that PVA you'll notice and we're going to chuck one over near that overhang where one's just stuck his head out and always worth a shot you should always try it always try it there we go Nice. That's a bite. Oh, there we go. Off he goes. That's a green car. <laughs> Right, back to the drawing board. We've been here now a couple of hours and um, the left rod, boom, had a bit of a drop take. 10 minutes later, I had a tench on that one. So I'm pretty sure the same sort of funny old take. So we've had a tench on the left one, which is not ideal because it's not what we're here for. So I'm gonna, I've pulled the, the one I threw out um, long earlier where I saw a couple of carp show. I've pulled that in there. There's been nothing more showing out there. And I'm gonna literally drop it right in the edge, almost, I don't know, 10 foot off this platform. So what I'm doing there is, because it's part of my challenge also, is a little complex tea wafter. Now on this, I love this little rig. It's made out of, here we go, let's have a little read up. The 25 pound reaction, which is the fast sinking braid. There we go, colour match that. It's a brilliant braid and, and it's got to it at the bottom. Size four, our size four, stiff rig chod hook. Now I love these. If you look at that closely, how I've done that, it's a Ronnie, okay, but on a soft boom, as you can see there, and I've cut 
the ring off the swivel of the quick change thing and then bent it round. It serves like a bent hook, but when you hook a fish, it will straighten out. No problem for this, but it is very aggressive on the lake bed. So that's the rig ready. A nice four and a half ounce lead. Might seem a bit extreme, but I'm literally lowering this in the edge and I want as much bang as I can possibly get on that. So if I just hang that there a second. Now on this, on this one, as part of what I'm doing, it's gonna be PVA string. Now, how many of us actually use that? Not many. And it's silly because it is so good. On that, I'm gonna pick out I don't know, four of the 15 mil complex tees. I'm going to give them a little cut in half. There we go. Just being different, you know, broken boilies, they are not standard, are they? We dropped half of one down there, right? We've got three and a half then. Here we go. We'll have another half then. I like even numbers, right. So we've got eight pieces there. Let's bring a needle. Again, this is something, and I'm guilty as well, it's something we don't use a lot of, and it has to change on the venues I'm fishing this year for my own angling. It's gonna be, ironically enough, it's gonna be complex tea, funny enough, so it's a bit of a training session for me, but it's gonna be boilies, mainly boilies this year, because I wanna try and pick out the better fish. So a string of needle, or a couple, which I've actually got in my box now, it's going to become an absolute essential item. Also, you know, when I use this little soft rig, I crumb all these up, make a little stick out of it. So if I'm casting that soft rig quite a long way, which I'm not here granted, but um, a nice stick pushed down with a string and needle, which is it's almost a forgotten art again, is um, it's double handy. Now here we go. A little bit of the string. I'm going to pull them onto there, shut the gate on the needle. Oh, there they are. One just fell off, so we're going to be half a boily less. We don't. Do we care? Do we not care? Right. So now there's a loop on the end of that, which if I can now with my chubby little hands open it up, I'm going to pass that in back through it, like so. There's our stringer. So now a couple of knots on that, just to secure it. Bear in mind we're only laying this in the edge anyway. That's nice and thin, that PVA string, so that is going to melt quite fast. Oh, the, these are quite pungent, these boilies, and they do smell really meaty. Anyone that's used the complex tea will know what I'm talking about. Anyone who hasn't, go and get some and you'll soon see. So there we go, we've got a little stringer, okay, which is part of what we're meant to be doing. So on the other two rods at the moment, we've got, I'm going to have to touch that now, because I've also given that a little bit of a a little bit of a dunk in that. And I know it's a pleasant smell, I'm not sure I want to com get completely covered in it, but there we are. So on the other two rods at the moment, we've got the mesh bags. I might put the solid bags on this evening. Now I've wrapped that round three times. Look at that, lovely little food parcel. Lower it in the edge, so we've got a really sharp hook, a great aggressive setup there. One of the 14 mil complex T wafters, barrel wafters on there, and it just balances down. The hook lays on the on the lake bed. The wafters sitting up like so. Give it a dunk. A few baits on a stringer. Four and a half ounce bomb. Where am I going to Where am I going to do the pictures? It's so obvious, isn't it? Nothing wrong with being confident. Sometimes you can be overconfident. Anyway, time we put this in the lake. So as I say, we've had a tench. We've seen two carp show. Just got to keep punching the bag. Hopefully at some stage today, we can start knocking them four PVA rigs off the chart. With the swim looking devoid of carp, it was time for a change of scenery to hopefully tick the first PVA method off the list. Right, let me explain why I look like a painter and decorator with all this under my arm. This is the beauty of this complex. It's very quiet where we are after that tench. We are going to stay in that corner for tonight because I'm led to believe it's a very good peg and the complex is quite crowded over on that mallard. So next to it is this one. I think it's Swan Lake, I think it's called or something like that. But either way, 
And you can see what we're up to. There's a lovely tree laying in the water to the right here. I'm going to whiz back, get the pod, stick our little PVA uh, tactics up against the branches. We'll have a couple of hours, keeping a long story short. A couple of hours here. I've dropped a little bit of pellet in there. We'll leave that alone for a few hours. Get back over there late this now. We'll get you. Right, having moved over here, I'm going to use the pole because there's a lovely big area of snags over there. Now I'm putting, I've got a nice big handful. I just want to get a bite. I'm not messing around here with bait and bait and bait. I've put a nice handful of complex tea, six millers in there. And my little yellow hit and run on that one, which I have to use, I'm told. And I'm going to shift it across there. Polystyrene's on there because clearly I haven't got a clue what's down there. Not a clue. So at least that will hold the rig up off the lake bed. I mean, in snags, you're going to have leaves, debris, fairly obviously, by the nature of the beast. I'm going to go in there. Got a fair bit of slack off that. Just push him in there and a nice tip. Bump. Now we'll come out of there. You will notice that this bobbin on the right hand rod is slightly shorter, the cord on it. Look at them. And I've got to be honest, because I, I, most of the time I've got them on single bank sticks, it doesn't bother me. Today it's really great on my OCD, and worse than that, it's great on Steve's OCD. He's commented loads. So, what I'm going to say now is the right hand one isn't the shortest, like the run of the litter, it's the lucky one. Remember that? Right hand, lucky one. All set. The middle rod, actually it isn't the middle rod now, it's the right hand rod because we're messing around with these rods. The middle rod, that's just whizzed off. The one we put against the branches over there. Oh, that's a nice little fish. More importantly, it'll be one of our PVA things. You know we said about the fourth one, but we didn't know what we were going to do. So what I done was, two bits of PVA foam in some mesh to hold the rig up because of all the silt and, and rubbish around them snags. That has equated to being the fourth one. <laughs> so, that will do me, and it's on the pink hit and run that, that Steve give me. One of our things is sorted. <laughs> Come on. And here we have Quasimodo of the carp world. Now my mate standing behind the camera had one rather like this at the manor last week. At Linear Fisheries. Substantially larger though, but they all count. This is the first one of the four PVA presentations that I'm to use. This was two PVA nuggets on the rig. It's a soft rig, but just in the scoop. We put it out with a pole with a few complex T pellets. Now the reason for the little, the soft hook link as well, it's very silty, I'm guessing it is under them trees, a lot of leaves, a lot of debris, and the two PVA nuggets in PVA mesh, in the PVA challenge, will hold the hook link up for what, a minute, and then drop it down on the pellet, so it's worked. Uh, it's worth bearing that in mind if you're fishing up against stuff like this, that the bottom is gonna be covered in litter, leaves, all, all, all manner of debris, so you want to be presented. So a nice soft hook link, it works on this one. He's got a massive tail, he's got a, quite a funky little body that's bent around the corner. If I was to show you the back of him, come on baby, calm down. You're going back now. You're going home, you're going home. He is bent like a banana, but there you go. First one of four, mesh bags next. Let's get it back out there. Thank you. Well, fish number one has gone back, which was a right result on the PVA nuggets. So we've got to choose a different PVA presentation now. <coughs> same rig, same hook bait. The little pink hit and run wafters that Stephen has very kindly gifted me. But this time, 
using the medium size mesh on the carp spirit thing you've got three different sizes in that it's not three for the price of one really which is brilliant but i only want a small bag so the medium size one is perfect pulling through with a long stringer needle and we're going to feed that down pull the bag in there there we go so that's our presentation now the second hopefully of four that will leave us let's have a fish on this then we're going to have to do the stringer and the solid bag bosh so we're going to do it another Probably another hour and a half here. <clears throat> it's only early afternoon. We are gonna fish the night in the main peg, which is directly behind us on Mallard Lake. But if we can get enough one here on this, we're halfway there, aren't we? So get that pole out, get that rig connected. The next one, be a mirror. After dispatching the rig back up against the tree, it went quiet. Before long, I found myself back at the main swim getting ready for the evening, but not before a bit of prep for the following day. Plan B, I'm gonna stick a bag of complex tea, six millers out here, in amongst the birds and the seagulls, because it's day ticket, so it might be crowded. We're gonna do the night over behind us on Mallard, but if I put a bag of pellet out here, if there's someone here in the morning, there is. If there isn't, there might be a bit of fizzing, and we hopefully we get a couple of big ones out of that Mallard Lake, we won't have to come on here. And if that's the case, I've pre baited for someone else. But half a bag of complex T6 millers should be enough to draw a bite early morning if we need it, because we are literally behind it. So one fish out of here this afternoon. Should have had more from what I'm told about the stock of the lake. But I've also been told they're not behaving how they normally would. So um, back to the van, get the bed chair, grab a couple of provisions out the van, set the rods over there for the night. Once back in the swim, I dropped one down the right with a pole, one even close to my hand, and one cast a bit further to a nice spot I'd seen the odd fish showing nearby. Third rod going in. Now these two, because I've only had one fish on the little nuggets, these two are both on mesh bags because we're trying to get rid of that one off the chart. This one, I'm trying to hold it because it's raining. Little stringer with, uh, again, a little PVA nugget so that it, it comes up to the surface so I can put 10 baits around it, boilies. Um, in line with the little platform over there, seven and a half wraps. It's all, it's all silt and muck out here. Then you've got bang, 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 bang. Obviously something's fed on it. I'm sure it's a spot that most people fish because it's also in line with the highest tree on the far margin. So, um, but if they're also fed on it, I'm gonna feed them on it as well. So there you go, a nice little round stringer, four baits broken in half, a little nugget, and yet again, the yellow hit and run that I'm doing so well on lately. There we go. Bang. Perfect. After getting the rods out just before dark, it was good to see a few fish moving in the area as the light dropped. I felt confident, but if I was going to complete the challenge, then I was going to have to put it out of the bag on day two. It is a good morning now because it's actually stopped raining. Since I spoke to you yesterday evening, now we, I was fully expecting, there was a good few fish here yesterday evening as it got dark, I was fully expecting one, two, loads of fish last night, but we have got absolutely none to report. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Midnight, funny old take on the left hand rod, nothing on the end, so I had to redo that. I've redone them again this morning at first light, Oh, well, Steve was still having a nap, actually, but um, I've seen a good few here. It feels right. We've got a big east-northeast wind coming in this corner. It's the, it's the carpiest it's felt since we got here. I walked over to the other lake this morning when I pulled these in to have a look where we put pellet last night, and um, it just feels stagnant over there. The wind's not hitting it. As I said, I've seen a good few here. Gonna stay here, best part of the day. We've got, we're gonna pack up about 6 p.m. We are against it today with the time. We can't do another night. We've both got time restrictions and um, got to be able to go to seven. So, kettle's on. We will not give up. 
I love my fishing, I love being here. This is, I'm really, really, really enjoying it, even though we haven't caught anything at all from this lake. But I see enough last night, 20s, good 30 pound fish pushed up out here to think we've got a very good chance. I don't know about completing the four PVA things, pretty sure we'll get at least one or two more. We've got a whole day, so tease on. I am gonna make Steve one. No, there's no way I'm drinking out of that cup. This is your cup. The abuse I got last time of that. You see I that? Brought, I, no, I brought my own and it is uh, it's a pretty cool cup. No, no, no. Cup. Well, I will oh, use I that, but let me just say, when I was at university, I studied, I studied <laughs> Latin. This word here, you see that? This is uh, Stephen in Latin. <laughs> Either way, we'll enjoy the day. We'll do our best. Milk in first. Well, Showed you before. Ian, I thought, uh, as it's been a little bit tough, I would give you a change of thought. Oh, a go little, on then. A little, a little something that should hopefully change it for you. Have you got, what is this, a trawler net? <laughs> Well, it might work just as well as that. Or an electro strobe or something. So this <coughs> is my lucky hat. Now you can't, you can't. Why? Well, I've worn it on two sessions now, and they've both been red letters. These have been fishing sessions, I take it. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah? it's covered in stuff like yeah. yeah okay. The more, the more slot you get on it, the carpier it becomes. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Eh? How far are you fishing? 130. I fish 130 yards out. It would have that little bar uh, with worm. Actually, no, it's seven wraps with um, whatever you give me in the box. <laughs> right, the lucky hat's got to stay on. If today the lucky hat doesn't produce for me, what do I do with it? Well, I'll definitely be having it back. Well, if it does produce for me, you might not get it back. <laughs> we'll stay here then. We'll give this one It's now. Eight o'clock, we give this till at least lunchtime before we start thinking, we might go and nick another double and then do it a couple more hours here late afternoon. It's only 50 yards away. Till then, tea is on. Okay. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Morning. How do you like the new lucky hat? Do you know this hat fits me? So if, it, if I manage to catch 20 pounds today, you will have to chase me down at A45 to get this hat back. You're not peeping it. Steve, <laughs> Steve, it's not happening. I don't know if you've noticed the biceps there, boy. Tell them about when you've wet yourself. Do you know what? There was a lesson there. Don't leave your coat hanging off the edge of your bed chair on a night when it's torrential rain <laughs> because this morning the bottom half of my coat was not an accident that someone has of my age. It was covered in rain and very much so. But I hung it up and it's dry now. With the sun getting higher in the sky, and after an hour or so looking out on the water, it was time to get on the move again. This time to the other side of the tree, right in a little tucked away swim, where hopefully there would be some fish feeding on the scoop I put in the night before. Managing to drop the rod in first time with as little disturbance as possible can be the difference between success and failure when dropping onto the fish. I was confident of a bite. Yesterday at noon, I put some pellet in this corner and they, there was three or four fish fizzing up yesterday and I had to go here, you know when you sort of leave it and you, when, you, when you drop and you think you've left it too late? So it was about another hour yesterday, nothing's happening in the main swim. Seeing a few fish in this area, which is the other side of that tree from us, um, worth a go. It, it, there's been two fish out today, right at the very far end, but I've seen enough at this end to question why we haven't had a take. It's just that maybe they're down there on this cold wind, but they're not hitting bottom. Tried to zig for a while. Bags, you know, we know what we're doing. If you ain't catching them, you ain't catching them. But we're gonna sit here. I keep saying we, he ain't doing nothing. He is just literally sitting there. I'm gonna give it here at least an hour, maybe hour and a half. We're going home in five, five and a half hours, but five minutes is all we need in the right spot. I don't think we're going to complete, in fact, I'm almost certain we're not going to complete all four of Steve's uh, PVA challenges, but it would be lovely to get one more fish, certainly from sort of what we're calling here the main lake, wouldn't it? You most of them are 20s, that would be lovely. I think it'd be quite easy to drop on the one behind us and maybe nick a couple of 10 to 12 pound fish, but 
We're not here for them small ones. No, we, we've sat and talked, Steve, haven't we? And, and I'd rather have a chance at a 30 to 30s. There's a few 30s in here, a lot of 20s, then nip on there and make it easy for myself. So I like a challenge. The challenge is to catch three more. Um, I think getting one more is going to be the challenge, in all fairness, starting. But thoroughly enjoying it. It is lovely, and I like the fact it is off form, so we're not battering them. It keeps you on your toes. So hopefully we'll get one out of this corner in the next couple of hours. Out of four PVA challenges, two complete. <gasps> yeah, 10 minutes ago we were thinking, no, no more fish, five inches in the right spot. PVA mesh bag completed. Next one to be a stringer. Out this little corner, literally as I netted it, another one jumped out like three yards off the bank. So there may well be another chance this afternoon. Time's clicking on, we've got about five hours, plenty of time to catch another two. Stringer next. Well, we have a few hours left uh, yet. Not many, actually, but enough. Two more PVA challenges, too. So now, there's a lot of fish shown in this corner where I have that common from. God knows why, because that wind, is, it's an east north east, and it is, ap look, absolutely bitter. My legs are doing all this stuff. Um, I've, I went back to the main camp, main bivy area. I've brought another rod in now because down this right hand margin, a real proper big, and there's fish in here up to 35 pounds. Probably not quite that big, but a 30 pound fish right against the bank. So I went and got another rod. We've got two in this little gap now. Who knows? But um, certainly a lot more confident now. We've got two rods out there now on stringers, which is the third of the four. So fingers crossed, a few hours left. With time slipping away, I waited nervously, hoping at any second one of the rods would rip off. And that is the end of that. <sighs> Episode two, now Steve sent me a challenge for four different types of PVA fishing. We managed to do two of them. I'm not going to bang on about the lake being off form. Generally here, I'm led to believe you'd expect two to five, six fish in 24 hour period. So one out of this lake, one out of that lake. So we've we, we done the, the PVA nuggets, which is the favorite way of doing them on the old new link up. We've done the, uh, the mesh bag, run out of time now. All, all three rods went back out on stringers then. Never even got to look at the solid bags, but then I ain't that fussed. If I hadn't done the solid bag, I'd have got Steve to do it for me because it's something I don't really fish with. But Stanic Lakes, thoroughly enjoyed it. We've had a fish out of Mallard, we've had a fish out of Swan. Usually you'd get 10 in a day out of Swan, but we've tried hard. I've really enjoyed it, but it's a really good laugh. Frozen after death sitting in this corner. We had one after 10 minutes in this corner, which we had five hours left then, so you'd think we'll have another one but it wasn't to be whatever it is anyway you guys thoroughly enjoy doing this you obviously have watched it so hope you enjoyed it as much as i've enjoyed making it which is an obvious thing to say looking forward to episode three thank you very much